All right, David Harry here, and in this video, I'm going to show you one of my gaming setups for my iPhone 15. Now, this one is the simplest gaming setup, so the easiest one to do. Now, this means that you can plug your iPhone 15 into an external monitor or TV, and then also play your games with a controller as well. Now, I say this one is the most simplest setup because it just requires a simple cable. So what this means is, is that we're going to be using data either from the phone itself through your cellular plan or the phone might be connected to say your Wi-Fi in the home. There will be a more complicated setup that I will do, which uses a hub, which then allows us to use ethernet for like even better internet connection and stuff. But right now, this particular video is like the simplest and easiest way to set up. Now, the only problem here is I can only guarantee that this will work with the Pro Max or the Pro. I don't know how the standard 15 or the 15 plus work as far as their USB-C outputs are concerned. So like I say, I can only guarantee this for the Pro Max and the Pro. So what I'm going to do now is just get into a quick how-to on how to connect the controller and the cable to the iPhone. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do then is just to show you the two most important parts here for the actual setup. That's obviously a game controller. And then this cable here, which is a USB-C to HDMI cable, which then allows us to get the video signal from the iPhone to the TV or the monitor. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to pair up my controller here. Now, I've tried this one, which is an Xbox Series S controller. Also, my Series X controller works, and they both should because they're basically the same controller, probably just different colors. Also, the PS5 controller works. Now, in my experience, they're the only ones that I've used, and I can definitely say that they all work. So what we need to do is to pair this first. Now, what I would strongly recommend is that you unpair the controller from whatever device it was last connected to. So in this instance, I've unpaired this from my Series S. And then that means that when I switch it on, the controller will just go straight into pairing mode. However, if yours has not been unpaired, you should also have a pairing button here. So what you need to do is just hold in that pairing button after the controller's been switched on in order to put the controller into pairing mode. However, like I say, this one isn't paired to anything, so this will kind of work kind of as soon as I switch the button on. So the next thing that I'm going to do is go into settings on the iPhone. Now once in settings, what we need to do is go to Bluetooth here. So tap on Bluetooth. Now, what I tend to find is that it is going to be much easier and more successful to pair any device by first of all, switching off Bluetooth. Now in my experience, switching it off putting a device into pairing mode and then switching Bluetooth back on means that the iPhone pretty much catches it straight away. Sometimes it doesn't seem to catch things when it's already permanently left on. So like I say, it's switched off right now. And as I've just said, this controller is ready to be like paired to a new device. So all I'm gonna do is switch the controller on here and then what we will see, it will do a slow flash here. Now, if you're using a different controller, you're gonna know how that pairs up, so you just do the same thing here. So that slow flash there just means that this controller hasn't been paired up to anything just yet. So now what I'm going to do is to press on the pairing button here. So I'm gonna hold in the pairing button, then that flashing light there will start flashing faster as we can see. So now the controller is in pairing mode. So what I'm going to do is switch Bluetooth back on and then pretty much immediately, there we go, it has found the controller. So like I say, I'm just going to tap on the controller there. It will ask me, do I want to pair the controller? I will say yes to that. And then that white light should stop flashing. There we go. So solid white light. The controller is now paired to the iPhone. And then the next thing to do is to just simply connect this cable to the iPhone via its USB-C port. And as we can see here, one end of the cable has got USB-C on and the other end of the cable has got HDMI on. So we simply just take the USB-C end of the cable and plug it into the USB-C port on the iPhone like that. And then we connect the HDMI end of the cable into an available HDMI port on either your monitor or your TV. Now, one last thing to mention before I continue is that I've got my iPhone in this case. Now, this is really important for one variation of this setup, and that's because 
This case is also MagSafe compatible, which means I can power the iPhone in one of the variations for this simple setup. Now this case is one by ESR, and this is actually a case that I've been using mostly since I've got the iPhone. It's actually a great protective case anyway. It's clear so I can see the color of the iPhone. And also it's got this camera guard system on it. But most importantly for this video, it has got MagSafe on it for one of the variations for powering the phone as well. Now, once everything is all connected up on the iPhone end, as soon as you plug in the HDMI end of this cable into your TV or monitor, the iPhone will automatically go into mirroring mode on the monitor. You don't have to go into any special settings or anything. The iPhone will just do this automatically. And also, the audio will get sent down the cable to the monitor as well. So if we listen here, it won't be very loud. Let me load that down. <laughs> As we can hear there, the audio goes straight to the TV or the monitor. Now at this point, if you want to listen on headphones, you're probably going to have to have a headphone output from the monitor. You can probably listen via Bluetooth as well through Bluetooth headphones on the iPhone. However, I've not done that. And I would imagine you might have a very slight delay between what's going on on the screen to what you're hearing in Bluetooth headphones. But nonetheless, just use the headphone output on your TV or your monitor for monitor. Now at this point, you might be thinking to yourself, this is all well and good, Dave. However, I can't be holding my iPhone whilst I'm trying to use my controller at the same time. So what I'm gonna show you now is just two options for you to put your phone onto like a base system so you can go totally hands-free and use the controller properly. So the first option is just a simple magnetic desktop stand like this one here. Now this will actually connect directly to the phone. However, because I've put this ESR case on and this has obviously got the MagSafe compatible ring on it, it just means that the connection to the stand is going to be a lot stronger. So. I'm gonna attach it to the stand. And as we can see here, I can kind of go all over the place with it. Now, if this was the iPhone all on its own, it's likely to fall off. But in this instance right now, it's not gonna fall off because of the case. However, you would be absolutely correct in thinking, but Dave, nobody goes around shaking a phone like this while the game, and, and you'd be absolutely right. But I'm just trying to show you that the reason for using a case like this is just so that you get a really good, strong magnetic attraction. And then a second option for using a stand for the iPhone whilst you're gaming is to use a wireless charging MagSafe base, which is what I've got here. So of course, what this is going to do is to allow the iPhone iPhone to stay fully charged whilst you're gaming. Now this one here is once again by ESR and this is absolutely fantastic. This can actually charge like you know your earbuds and also your watch and stuff. However for this setup obviously I'm just using it for the iPhone. Now of course you still don't require you know a MagSafe compatible case to connect the phone to a charger like this. However I still use the case because once again it just allows for a better magnetic attraction. And then if I connect the phone to the charging base what we will see here is that the phone is charging. So obviously once we finish our gaming session, the phone will all still be all topped up and stuff. Okay, so so far in this video, I've shown you how to connect everything together. However, there is absolutely no way that I'm going to do a video about gaming on any device without doing some gaming. So just give me one moment. Okay, so as we can see now, I've got my Ninja in the equation, which basically means I can now record the gameplay. And all I've done here is to connect this USB-C to HDMI cable into the Ninja and then connect the Ninja's output to the monitor as we can see with the two cables on the side of the Ninja here. Now the reason why I'm showing this is because even if you're not using a Ninja but you're using some other type of game capture device, you can definitely use a game capture device with this particular setup for this like simple way of gaming off the iPhone. Anyways, I'm just going to jump into a game of Call of Duty here. Now I was going to use Warzone Mobile for the end game demonstration 
comparison here. However, Warzo Mobile makes the iPhone 15 Pro Max super overheat and it becomes unplayable after about seven or eight minutes or so. So that would have been a real bad one to have demonstrated. However, if you want to see some Warzo Mobile gameplay on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, check my recent videos because i've done a couple there with warzone and i've got to say the graphics are the best you will ever see at the moment as far as warzone is concerned it just works amazingly on the iphone 15 pro max until it superheats up but just a word of warning the only way that i can play warzone past about eight minutes is to use an ice block to put the phone on top of seriously one of those blue freezer blocks is what i have to use so i can carry on playing to cool the phone down it's crazy Anyways, I will jump into a game of Call of Duty Mobile, which looks absolutely amazing on the iPhone 15 Pro Max in this type of setup. Now, for anybody who's interested in anything that I've used in this video, there will be Amazon links in the video description below. If you've liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you super like the video, a subscription to the channel would be awesome. And I'll be doing a lot more stuff to do with the iPhone 15, also the iPad Pros and some Mac stuff, as well as my usual tech things. Anyway, before I get into this, I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now. Changing Mac, cover me. Enemy in sight, enemy down. Contact with enemy. Target down. Sentry gun ready to deploy. Enemy in sight. Contact with enemy. Tango down. Stealth chopper. awaiting orders. Enemy down! Contact with 
with enemy. Friendly Predator missile inbound. Target down. Friendly stealth chopper inbound. Enemy down. <gasps> Cover me. Contact with enemy. Target down. Changing mag. Tango down. Down. 